Hello, good morning to you. Welcome to the Lord's house. It's good to be able to come to God's house, especially after I watched all y'all eat all the fish yesterday. Yes, don't y'all let on like y'all didn't think you'd eat a bunch of them because there's a bunch of them got to eat. Sure enough. Have y'all enjoyed that? Thank God for it. It's good to see each and every one of you here this morning. It's good to have our visitors back with us this morning. It's good to have uh, a lady back with us today. I've missed for a long time. Good to see you, sister. Sure enough. But God's good to us and blessed us with a great opportunity. We do have some that are traveling today. We have some that are at the hospital today. And we need to pray for each and every one of them. But uh, we're glad that we're able to come to the Lord's house and get with God's people. And have a good time of celebration around the things of God. Amen. And I tell you, we do need each other. We need each other more, as the Bible says, and so much the more as we see the day approaching. We do need each other. And we thank God for the opportunity to come together and be a body of believers. Now, uh, Psalms 140 says, Deliver me, O Lord, from the evil man. Preserve me from the violent man which imagine mischief in their heart continually are they gathered together for war. And unfortunately, there is an element of people out there that that's what they want. They want to destroy. You know, the thief come with not but to steal and to kill and to destroy. The Bible says, but Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. And thank God for the life that we have. And uh, we just rejoice over what God's doing. Let's go to Lord in prayer and ask him to help be with us today and thank him for the opportunity. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, as we come to the throne, we thank you for the privilege. I pray, Lord, you'll help us. God is direct us. Give us what we need here this morning. Lord, we do have some that are sick, unfortunately, and uh, battling the, the sickness. And I pray, Lord, you'll help them to get well and get back on their feet. I think about uh, Brother Tim, Brother, Brother Tom. I think about others here, Lord, that uh, uh, with, with what sickness they've been battling with. I think about those in the hospital. And I lift them up to you. And then, of course, those that are traveling. But, Lord, we come today needing a blessing from the hand of God. And I pray, Lord, we'll get much more than we can even imagine. I pray, Lord, you'll guide and direct us. Be with us. Speak to our hearts here today, both here and at home. Those that are tuning in, I pray, Lord, you'll take this message and allow it to go around the world. Thank you for the opportunity in Christ's name. Amen. Good job. Amen. 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 Good morning. And did you know I found out something yesterday while we were here? If you didn't get to come to the fish fry, we had more taste testers in the back than you <laughs> Now, I ain't figured this out yet. Now, you know, the good Lord used the apostles to catch fish, and they did, and, and he fed the thousand, five thousand. But you would have thought they was five thousand back there, the way they was grabbing all that stuff. Um, <laughs> what about you with the tongs breaking them? Well, now, you didn't see that. <laughs> That's a half-two case. When the case broke, we had to, everybody had to jump in the heat. <laughs> There was so many hands. I'm just glad they didn't have a fork back here. You know, Terry Meyer didn't have a fork. Amen. If you would stand with me, please, page 448.
his church. If you look around in front of the pew and grab this little paper and fill it out and put it uh, in the offering plate, it'll give us a regular year visit. We'd sure appreciate it. Also, uh, I wanted to let everybody know we are fixing to start working on the Christmas songs. And I told this last year, and I'm going to tell it to everybody again. You may be seeing, seeing out there right now and may not uh, want to sing with the choir, but you may want to sing with the choir during the Christmas time. So if you do, we'll be start practicing on that, and we'll let you know it'll be on Sundays. And then if we get to where we have to, it may be on Wednesdays. It's just according to how many songs the pastor this year he gives us. So we're, <laughs> we're, we're waiting on those, but we will be getting those pretty soon. So we just want to look on that.
take up the offering, I look at here and I see a lady walk into the auditorium and she goes up and she grabs another lady and gives her a hug. You know, it's important how much we need each other. How much we need each other. Thank God we have each other, amen, and it really is. It's, it's to be valued. And what bonds us all together is the fact of the love of God. God so loved us. He's given himself to us. And the best way to show that love is as we reach out one to another. What a great privilege and honor that is. Good to see each one of you here today. I've been hearing all the turmoil out there in California and things, and churches still have their clothes, the clothes, the doors are closed and things, and I feel for those people. I really do. So every opportunity we give, we'll cherish it. Praise the Lord. It's good to see you, Chair, one of you in the Lord's house this morning. It's good to have the opportunity to come. Amen. It really is. It's a blessing. We get ready to receive the offering. I think uh, I think what we got left on the calendar for uh, the month of uh, August, we got Bible correlation, uh, correlation, putting Bibles together. And so uh, we'll do that the last Tuesday of the month, and uh, that's what's still on our calendar for right now in the month of August. And then. Uh, Get over in the month of September, we got a 44 year anniversary to celebrate, amen. And uh, we're going to have uh, some singers come be with us that day, just a, just a good time of fellowship, like yesterday, getting around the, the old fish fry. And it, it really is what a, what a blessing, yeah. Sister, you just you just go around just loving on everybody this morning. And she knows, see, now she's in her own little world over there, she knows, sure not. That's right, Miss Sherry, I'm talking about you. No, it's all right. No. You know, it, it's kind of like, you remember when you were in school and, and uh, you pulled out a piece of chewing gum and the teacher said, now look, you can't chew that gum unless you got a piece for everybody in the class. You might want to just go ahead and share with the rest of the class. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> it's good to see, good to see uh, that going on. It really is. Loving one another, caring one for another. And, it, and it's true. You know, we, we should always and, and uh, never hold back how we feel one for another. It's true, you know, and I love you. I love this this is a family. We are a church family. We thank God for that. But we are looking forward to uh, the 13th of September, which is going to be our 44th anniversary, and looking forward to that. And uh, we'll have, of course, uh, services that morning, and then, of course, afterwards we have a dinner, and then after the dinner we're going to have a uh, song service, and then after that, uh, we'll, I guess we'll all probably find somewhere to go lay down and and the rest the rest of the day out. All right. But uh, looking forward what God's given us. And Brother John is right. We're starting to prepare and prep for uh, uh, the Christmas program and, and looking forward to that. And yes, we are working on the song. We'll, we'll get all that stuff uh, ready and together and, and uh, looking forward to uh, having a good opportunity. You know, last year we with the cantata, we had, how many of y'all remember the cantata? Wasn't that wonderful and a great blessing? Well, I, I, I really think, and Miss Sherry, am I not right? I really think this probably would be better than that. I'm, I'm feeling that way. I'm feeling that way, and I hope it is. I hope it's a real blessing, because what we always want to do is, is, is really give a message and, and really reach out to touch people in, in a great way, and that's what, that's what we want to do. We also, uh, like I mentioned this morning, uh, we know that there's some people in the hospital and, and things like that, and we want to pray for them and uh, lift them up in our prayers, but we thank God for the opportunity that we have to come and give back to the Lord. Amen? And so uh, in that, Brother Robbie, if you will, that's the blessing of your offering this morning, and also pray for the service this morning, too. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be in your house. Father, I thank you for the fellowship we had yesterday. Father, I ask you to be with all the ones on the prayer list. Uh, just to heal and touch your body. A special prayer for uh, Tammy's daddy, Lord God. Just heal and touch him. Give her safe for the traveling grace. And, uh, Father, I ask you to just uh, take this offering to uh, build your kingdom. And, uh, this church and uh, throughout the world. And, uh, we just ask you to forgive us what we see every day. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs>
Location, location, location. I liken that, uh, Brother John, that uh, that old saying is, you've got to grow where you're planted, amen? You, you can't, uh, uh, you know, uh, I've never been to Alaska, and uh, I've read about Alaska. I've seen uh, uh, movies about Alaska. I, I've seen uh, clips and pictures of Alaska and things like that, but I've never been to Alaska, so I'm really not sure how the Alaskan people react or behave at, at, at times. I really don't know how they interact. Matter of fact, uh, I've seen some pretty cold weather before, but I don't know that I've ever seen it as cold as what it is in Alaska. I, I just, you know, I just never have. It's like the same thing. I've never been to Hawaii. Some of y'all sitting here this morning, you might have been to Alaska, you might have been to Hawaii. Shame on you. Anyhow. But I've never been to those places, and I've heard about them uh, and, and seen pictures and, and, and movies and things like that. But I don't know about Alaska. I don't know about Hawaii. I, I'm not familiar with those people. I'm really not. But I can take you out on the mountain. I can take you out on the mountain. I know the mountain folk. Brother Jeff, we know the mountain folk, amen. We sure enough that we know the mountain folk. I know what it is to grow up in the country. I know country folk. I know what that is. I know what that's like. I grew up on a farm, 320 acre farm. I know what that's like. I know what it's like to be in the hay field. I know what it's like to pick up eggs. I mean, I don't know what it's like to pick up eggs. 16,000 a day? I thought y'all would fall off. Amen. I know what it's like to pick up eggs. My grandmother had a 360 foot long laying house and we picked up eggs twice a day. Amen. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to fool with hogs. I know what it's like to mess with cattle. I know what it's like. I know what it's like to ride a horse. Amen. I know what it's like. The reason is because I've been around that. But there's a lot of things I don't know what it's like because I've never been there. Now, why, why are you saying that, Richard? Well, like the old saying says, you got to grow where you're planted. you got to grow where you're planted. <coughs> Luke chapter 17, go there with me. <coughs> Luke chapter 17, verse number 12, and as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men which were lepers, which stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Master, or Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And he saw them and said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priest. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice a glorified God. And fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered, said, Where they're not ten, uh, not, not ten cleansed, but where are the nine? And there are not found that return to give glory to, go, uh, to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now, y'all pause for a second. There were ten that were healed. But only one came back to say thank you. Now, that one that turned to come back to say thank you, he could have probably gotten all upset and said, y'all left me, well, what happened to you? No. And God reveals to us that he's a Samaritan. Now, why is that significant? Because if you'll study out the history between the Jews and the Samaritans, it wasn't good history. Matter of fact, the Jews thought of the Samaritans as what? Dogs. But I tell you one thing, we read about a good Samaritan that stopped and helped a man one time that fell amongst thieves, say amen right there. We also found that this man right here, who also was a Samaritan, he turned and went back to the Lord and said, thank you. You know why? Somewhere along the lines, that Samaritan that stopped to help that man that was falling into the ditch, and somewhere along the lines, that man that turned back to say thank you, they were taught by a mom and a dad that told them, hey, no matter what you are, no matter where you come from, it's important to still treat people with the right respect and the right honors you ought to. Amen. Location, location, okay. Don't give me this thing. It's just the way it is. No, sir, no, ma'am. The truth of the matter is, we still ought to honor and respect in the days in which we're living in. Say amen right there. Amen. And so as you see the location right here, there's a reason for that. There's a reason why he's talking about the sea of Tiberias. There's a reason why he's talking about Galilee. There's a reason why he's bringing that to our attention. And the fact of the matter is, no matter where you come from, no matter where you were raised at, we need to remember that it is still important that we still live the right way. Now, what do you mean, preacher? Well, the Bible says in Proverbs 22, verse number 6, train up a child away and she go and he's old, he will not depart from it. Yes, sir, no, ma'am. Yes, yes, no. The right way, Brother Robbie, still works. Amen, right there. Now, why is that important? 
We're going to get to it. Location, location, location. Mark chapter 6, go there with me. Mark chapter 6, location, location, location. He said unto them, verse number 31, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place, and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. Now what the Lord's saying here is, there's times, Brother, Brother John, you gotta, kind of got to get away from it all. Come out to a desert place. You need to get some rest. You need to, uh, you need to take some leisure, if you will. They were coming and going. There was a, the, the hectic, the, the daily grind. Things were going, and it, it, it was tearing them up. Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. And they departed into a desert place by ship, part privately, and the people saw them departing, and many knew him, and ran a foot uh, uh, hither, thither, out of all the cities. And out, were, uh, out, uh, out went to them, and came together unto him. And Jesus, so when he came out, saw much people, and was moved with compassion toward them, because they were uh, as sheep having no shepherd. He began to teach them many things. When the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desert place, and now the time is far, far past. Send them away. They may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread, for they have nothing to eat. You know, sometimes it's easy to pass the buck. Sometimes it's easy to shirk the responsibility. Sometimes it's uh, it's really easy, uh, you know, to turn the blind eye to deaf ear. I got news for you. That's not why we're here. That's not why we're here. Location, location, location. The question was asked of the Lord, and I won't go into the scriptures this morning, but you know the story of the Good Samaritan again. And the reason for that story was because the question that the lawyer asked him was, who is my neighbor? And Jesus begins to tell him who his neighbor is. It's the people you come in contact with. It's the people that you get around. Now you might say, well, preacher, I don't know anything about their background. I don't know anything about where they come from. But we're still people. Say amen right there. We're still created by God. Say amen right there. We're still put here on this earth to do a witness and be a work for the things of God. Amen. Say amen right there. We're still supposed to carry out and be a light to the world. Say amen right there. The reality is, don't tell me just because you don't know where they come from, just because you don't know their background, that lets you off the hook. It don't. You're still obligated. Where are you at to serve the Lord where you're at? Doesn't matter where they came from. What matters is that you do the work that God's put you here to do and be a light to them. Amen. Boy, don't y'all get quiet on me this morning. <laughs> location, location, location. I find that very interesting as here they are and the circumstance and the situation, Brother John, presented itself. They went to a desert place, Brother Robbie, and they all followed them there. That's a place where there's no food, if you will. Amen. And they followed them there. But he didn't let them off the hook because there's still an obligation. There's still an opportunity. There's still a time to still serve God no matter what the circumstance and the situation is. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it, it doesn't negate the situation. There was still a need there. When you start seeing it like that, you start realizing God's put us in a circumstance and a situation to be a light to the world. That's where we're at today, Brother Jeff. Location, location, location. You've got to grow where you plant. Say amen right there. Verse 2, look at it with me. The Bible says in verse number 2, and a great multitude followed him because they saw the, his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. And uh, let's, let's face it, a lot of people have a lot of needs and they're looking for the Lord for a lot of different reasons. But the great multitude followed him. You know why? Because what they heard. Let me put it to you this way. Miss Joyce, the fact of the matter is, I've been following the Lord because of what I heard, too. 
That's why I follow him. Because of what I've heard. I'll go anywhere he wants me to go because of what he has told me. In Matthew chapter 4, verse number 24, and his fame went throughout all Syria, and, through, and they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with diverse diseases tormented, and those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatics, and those which had palsy, and he healed them. And there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, from Jerusalem, from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. You know why? Because they had needs. They had needs. They heard what he did, and they knew they could get the answer right there. They knew that they could get the solution to their problems. They knew where they could get their help. They followed him. I began to look at the circumstances of the situation that we're living in today, and I hear that there's churches that still haven't opened their doors, and I hear that there are people out there that are wondering, that are searching, that are seeking, and I want you to understand, there's a reason why we're still supposed to stand where God's put us. Why? Because there's an opportunity to still declare the message. To share the word. If we'll do our part and do what God's put us here, amen. What did he tell us in Matthew chapter number 28, verse number 19? Go ye therefore and preach the gospel, amen. Hey, we're here to teach all people what the word of God says. We're here to share the Lord Jesus Christ with the lost and dying world. And if we'll do what we're supposed to do, Jason, it will make an impact on their lives and the people they come in contact with too. It's all about sharing the Lord. We want me to look chapter 14, if you will. Verse 16 says, And then he said unto, unto him, A certain man uh, made a great supper and bade many, meaning he invited a lot of people. It's kind of like yesterday, Brother John, we made a great uh, fish fry, same in right there, and we gave the invitation out to everybody. But we thank God for who God brought our way. And I guarantee you, one person left hungry. He bade me. He sent his servant at supper time to say unto them that were bidden, come in, for all are now ready. And they with one consent begin to, begin to make excuse. The first said unto him, I have bought a piece of ground. I, I must go and, need, and, and see it. I pray that he have me excused. Another said, I bought five yoke of box, and I, I go to prove them. I pray thee, have me excused. Another said, I have married a wife, and therefore I cannot come. So that servant came and showed his Lord these things. And the master of the house was angry and said unto his servant, Go out quickly into the streets and the lanes and of the city, and bring in hither the poor, the maimed, and the halt, and the blind. I want to pause for a second. I'm going to take you back over the three that were making excuses. One said... I bought a piece of ground. You know, I've always thought of that man, Brother Vernon, as a fool. You know why? If you go buy a piece of ground and you never looked at it, you're not too smart. Say amen right amen. here. Sure enough. If you're that kind of person that you'll buy a property without seeing it, I got a piece of property in Kansas. You know, I need to see you. Amen. I'm ready to sell it to you. Say amen right there. I promise you, I'm looking for top dollar. Amen. So if you want to buy a piece of property and never looking at it and everything, that's a foolish thing to do. Amen. Then there's the man that says, hey, I bought five, five yoke of bucks and I got to go and try it out. Then again, Brother Kenneth, that's a fool. Say amen right there. You know what? How many of y'all would ever get a tractor or a car or anything without first test driving? Amen. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. I'd be afraid I might have got the one limit out of the deal. Come on now. Hey, you're going to test drive it ahead of time. That guy's a fool also. You said, why are you calling them fools? Because the fool said in his heart, there is no God. They didn't want to look. They didn't want to take the time. They were too busy. And they pushed it away and said, we ain't got time for that. Then the third one said, I married a wife. I'm going to tread awful softly on that one because I married a wife. <laughs> don't y'all look at me strange. Some of y'all too married wives. Amen. Amen. Now, I don't know why he's using his wife as the excuse, but apparently he's a coward. Amen. Because he don't step up on his own. He's using his wife. He's blaming her. Yeah. Come on now. That's what he's doing. He's blaming her. If you don't want to come, just say you don't want to come. Don't, don't use your wife as the excuse. Amen. And so, unfortunately, all three of those, the master of the house wasn't happy with. But he said, go out quickly. 
Go out and find the lame and the halt and the blind. Go out and find all those people that nobody wants and bring them into my house. And the servant said, Lord, it is done as thou hast commanded, and yet there is room. The Lord said unto the servant, Go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in, that my house may be filled. Location, location, location. Wherever people are, we ought to be serving and honoring the Lord with the opportunity God gives to us. Amen. Amen. That's what they did. That's what they were about. Verse number three of the text, look at it. And Jesus went up into the mountain, and there he sat with his disciples. He's trying to get away. He's trying to have an opportunity with them. He's trying to take the time to teach them. He's trying to show them so that he knows when he's gone. They'll, pre they'll be prepared to move forward doing what's needful and necessary. Verse 23 of Matthew 14 says, When he had sent the multitude away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone. In Luke chapter 6 and verse number 12, the Bible says this, And it came to pass in those days that when he went out into a mountain to pray, and continued all night in prayer to God. What was he doing, Brother John? He was getting in the way so that he could pray, so he could spend time to commune with God. I want you to understand, each and every one of us in here this morning, it's important for you to get alone with God. Why? Because Brother Carl, he uses this as, a, as an opportunity to teach you, to grow you, to develop you, to give you the things that you're going to need going forward. That's what he's doing with his disciples. He's taking and communing with them. And look, look with me. In Luke chapter number 9 and verse number 28, and it came to pass about the eight, about the eight days after these things, he took Peter and John and James and went up into the mountains to pray. What is he doing? But he's teaching them. He's developing them. He's growing them. He's showing them the way that God would have them to live. And as he's communing with them, he's teaching them, he's developing them, and he's getting them ready. You know why? John chapter 16, go there with me. Well, you're turning your Bibles there in Mark, Mark chapter 14, verse number 7 says, For ye have the poor all, with you always, and whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. I started to think about that, Brother John. I started thinking about me as a young man coming up, and I think about my father. Think about my dad this man. He ain't always going to be around, unfortunately. One day death's door is going to come and knock you. Amen. And I think back at what my dad's done and what my dad has revealed to me, what, that, what dad's taught me now through the years and everything. And I lean on that, Brother Kenneth. Why? Because one day dad ain't going to be around no more. I know that. Sometimes it's kind of hard to swallow and, and really, Brother Jeff, to take into consideration. But one day, one day dad's not there. He's dead. He's moved on to eternity. And I'm still here in, in the process of that. I fall back on what he taught me, what he showed me, what he revealed to me during those times. And the Lord's telling his disciples here, I'm not always going to be around, fellas. But you're going to have to carry on. And that's what he's doing here. He's teaching them. He's growing them. Verse number one says, These things have I spoken unto you that you should not be offended. Why? There's going to come a time that you're going to be offended if you ain't careful. They shall put you out of the synagogue. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that they do God's service. You think that he's talking about now? The times when it's going to get devil, it's going to get hard, Christian. They're going to put you out of the synagogue. They don't even want you to go to the, the, the church house anymore. They don't want you to do anything down at the church house anymore. Why? They're going to think they're doing God's service. These, these things will they do, to, uh, do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time come, you may remember that I have told you of them. And these things I said unto you at the beginning because I was with you. I told you why I was there. So that when I'm not there, you'll be prepared to be ready for it. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you ask me whether the whether goes thou. But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comfort will not come unto you. But if I depart, 
I will send him unto you. You know, God has a purpose and a reason in all this. Has a purpose and a reason in all this. As he took his disciples aside, he's trying to teach them, he's trying to reveal to them things that must come hereafter. Verse 4, look at it with me. I see something very significant also in this passage of Scripture. And the Passover, a feast of the Jews, was nigh. I start thinking about the time. I start thinking about the time. Is it a mystery why we're going through what we're going through right now? The time. The circumstance, the situation of the days in which we live. The time. John 11, 55, and the, Jew, and the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand, and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. The reason he's telling you this is because there's a time frame that they have to activate or to move into. The time Close to the Passover. Where do they have to be at the Passover, Brother John? Back down in Jerusalem. The time. They were there, and the Passover was near. The time. I started thinking about the times in which we're living in now. And I think a lot of times as we start to put it off and think we got all the time in the world and we keep kicking that can down the road, we're saying, preacher, it's, you know, they've been talking about the Lord's return for so long and we know, you know, uh, there's always been bad things and it's always been, and they always been looked down the road. I think about the time. John 4, verse number 34 says this. Jesus saith unto them, my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work. Say not, ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes. Lift up your eyes. Open your eyes. See what's in front of us right now. Lift up your eyes. Why? Look on the fields. They're already wide in the harvest. It's already time. We're not talking about down the road. We're talking about here and now. John chapter number 13 and verse number 26. Jesus answered, it is, it, he, he it is to whom I shall give a sop when I have dipped it. And when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. And after he sopped, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, that, that, that thou doest, do quickly. It's time. Listen to me here, Judas. It's your time. If you're going to do it, do it now. Don't put it off. Do it now. And the Bible says he went out quickly. He left quickly. He got on out of there. You know why? It was time. It was time. When I start seeing things like that in the, in the scriptures, Brother Kenneth, I realize there's a reason and a purpose. Amen. It reminds me of the scriptures here. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. How quick, Danny, will it come? It'll come quick. In a moment, in a quick of an eye, he says. Miss Norris is going to happen so quick. Time. We act as if we got all the time in the world. We don't. Miss Nancy is going to come so quick. Time. Timing is everything. It's going to happen so quick. Then verse number five, look at it with me. When Jesus lifted up his eyes and saw the great, saw a great multitude come unto him, he saith unto Philip, when shall we buy bread that all these may eat? He's challenging Philip. He's, he's, he's testing him, if you will. He's putting him to the test. And Philip, he's coming back. Well, you know, Lord, uh, you know, uh, we have only this amount of money. And what's that amongst all the great big multitude? You know, a lot of times we want to look to our cash, uh, how much cash we got in our pockets. You know, when we start talking about taking on a missionary or supporting a, a cause or something like that, all, automatically we start looking at our dollars and saying, well, I don't know if we got enough money to do that, preacher. We never ask the question, is our God big enough? Do we serve a big God? Or are we more concerned about what's in our pockets? By the way, how do you have what you have in your pocket? It came from God. Do you not realize he owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the hills that the cattle are on? Do you not realize who it is that has all things? He's got more than enough. 
Here they are. He's challenging them. He's asking them. And they go right to the money. He said, well, you know, 200 penny worth. What's that among so many? Huh? Then another one says, well, we've got a lad here. But hey, he's only got two fish and five barley loaves. Uh, what, what's that amongst to all this big crowd? So they shot down the money. And now they're shooting down the one little fellow, the one guy that showed up prepared. And they're putting him down. Well, what's that against so many? Well, I got news for you. Little is much when God is in it. Amen. Little is much when God is in it. We start looking at our pocketbooks, how and why we cannot serve God. I got news for you. If you look in your pocketbook and you got a dollar, then you can serve God. Don't sit there and look at your pocketbook and think you can't serve God. When you start looking at the situation and open up those cupboards and stuff, you say, well, you know, uh, I don't know that we're going to be able. Hey, if you look at what God can do, you'll be able to do anything. Amen. 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 Here's one little lad at a 5,000 plus that showed up prepared. I'll tell you what I mean. I'll make it fast and quick for you this morning. Here's the deal. Out of all those people, He's the only one that brought his lunch. He's the only one that brought his lunch. If there was more food there, they would have said it. If there was more food, they would have said it. He's the only one. Now, it might have been mom and dad. I know you're going to go down there and uh, see that Jesus and everything. But uh, before you go, son, I want you to have plenty of food. So you take you some fish. And you take you some bread. They just came by where? The Sea of Tiberias. So it's normal for them to have fish there. Say amen. Amen. And in the process of that, his mama or his dad told him, he said, hey, son, you're going to be out there. I know how these Jesus right around this go. They're, they're going to last all day. And if you're going to go down there, you need to be prepared. That's some pretty good advice. I'd say amen right there. You're going to need to be prepared. Because when you serve the Lord, it's not a temporal thing. Amen. It's not a temporal thing. If you're going to get involved in that Christian stuff, if you're going to spend time there, it's going to be, it's going to take all day. Sometimes we think, well, we better get on with this thing. I, I got such and such and so such and such. I got places to be and things to do, preacher. Oh, it's on the clock now. It's on the clock now. I got news for you. You better take the time for the Lord. Amen. You better take the time. This young lad, he was prepared to be there all day. He brought his fishes and he brought his five barley loaves. He's prepared. Now I would think somewhere along the line, Brother Carl, he had a good mom and daddy that told him, always be prepared, son. Always be prepared. So that when he showed up <coughs> in a crowd of 5,000 plus, he's the only one that's prepared. Even the disciples weren't prepared. They were relying upon their dollars. What's the first thing they went to? 200 penny worth. Huh? Y'all with me this morning? They were relying upon their pocketbooks. Talking about what money they had. It was all right for the disciples and Jesus with 200 penny worth. But now we got 5,000 plus out here. And how are we going to supply, supply and take care of them? They weren't prepared for what was about to happen. But Jesus knew what he was going to do. Look at the scriptures right there. He only asked Miss Doris because he was testing them. Then you get on into the other and he says, uh, I found a lad out here and he's got two fishes and five barley loaves. And if we take that, what's that against a big crowd like this? They've forgotten what Jesus can do. And I think along the lines of where we're at today, Miss Joyce, we're forgetting what Jesus can do. My God is able to go above and beyond anything I say there. When I look out at the circumstance of the situation, it might look huge to the eye. It might look overwhelming to the circumstance of the situation. It might look like it is so much against. But I got news for you. I got a big God that's bigger than all of it. And the best thing for me to do is get prepared. Show up prepared. Show up prepared. Now, what does that mean, preacher? Well, this young lad, when he
he came to the meeting, he had two fishies and five barley loaves. He's prepared. That meant he anticipated, he anticipated spending some time with the Lord. That meant he anticipated a circumstance in a situation where he needed two fishes and five barley loaves. So he brought what he had. He brought what he had. And what he had was just enough. Because he's prepared. You know what the Bible tells and teaches me? He tells me in the word, Brother William, get prepared. Be ye also ready. Be ye also ready. We're living in a day and an age where we'll just get prepared, brothers and sisters. You say, how do I do that? It starts on your knees. See, it started at home for this young man. For, before he ever left the house, he was already thinking ahead about what was needful and necessary. This morning, it's going to start on your knees. Going to your knees saying, God, help me, guide me, direct me, give me what I need in these days and times in which we're living in. It's time for us to be prepared. Number two, once we get up off those knees, then we're going to be activated. Because now, how are we going to get prepared with the John? Well, what do we need to have in the day and the time in which we're living in right now? Well, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, where we need not to be shamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Learn your Bible. You know the Bible says be ready to give an answer? Be ready to give an answer. How in the world can you have an answer for them that are asking you out there if you don't know what the Bible says? So getting prepared is getting the answers. So that when they ask, you can share the bread of life with them. Amen. You can't give it to them if you ain't got it. But if you learn your Bible, get prepared. Learn your Bible that when a situation and a circumstance arises, you'll be ready to open it up and say, hey, God's word says this. I know what they're saying on that news. I know what they're saying in politics. I know what they're saying up the street. But I got news for you. God's word says this. And God's word is the truth. And every man's a liar. So when you get prepared, you know your Bible. Now there's a third thing you need to do. If you're going to get prepared, it wouldn't have done him any good if he stayed at home. He went forward. He went to where the circumstance and the situation was needed. He went to where he was prepared. This ain't a time for us to sit back and just, what's going to happen is going to happen, preacher. No, there's a great need out there. If we'll get prepared, then God will be pleased with that. We'll get prepared, then God will use and utilize that. You see, this one, this one young man that brought his two fish and his five barley loaves. I bet you, I bet you, if we knew the rest of the story, I bet you he had people helping him carry those 12 baskets home. Guess who God gave that back to? See, when we give things to God, God turns around and gives us back. Come on now. Y'all know your Bible? When you give things to God, God gives you things back, amen? But he multiplies it. He takes what you give and it blesses that and it overruns. Hey, 23rd Psalm, my cup runneth over. Amen. Do we believe God? All God's ever wanted us to do, Brother William, is put him to the test. He says, prove me, test me, see if I won't. Get prepared. Get prepared. Out of 5,000 plus, there's only one young lad that I know of that was prepared. And wow, what a blessing it was. Look what God did with it. Look how many lives were touched because one young lad was prepared. Now, if God will do that with that one young lad, what do you think God's going to do with you when you're prepared? Every head bowed and every eye closed over the around this morning. It is an opportunity, brothers and sisters. It's not something to run from or shy away from. It's a time to embrace and to move forward with the things of God. Lord, I pray that you speak to the hearts here this morning. I pray that you speak to our hearts and bring us to our knees. I pray if there's one here today that doesn't know you, they'll come to know you today before it's everlasting too late.
have your willing way at this altar in your Lord in Christ's name. Amen. All stand. What page, Brother John? Page 276. 276. And God's holy heart, you come. You come. You step out. You come. I can hear my tells me that if we just are willing to let God use us and utilize us, great things can come from it. When we learn how to just put it all on the line for the Lord, let him take and have it, amazing things begin to happen. You see, forevermore, we'll talk about that young lad. Forevermore, we'll talk about that young lad, how he was prepared the day God needed him. Step up and do what he did. What a great, great testimony. Say, so, well, preacher, who am I? Exactly. Who are we? If we're just willing to let God use us, that one day, there will change everything. That one day, that one opportunity for that young lad for all eternity changed in his life forever. And he made a major impact. And not just on that group, how many of us have read this story time and time again and it's impacted our lives? That's all God wants to do. <laughs> Use us. Let's give him the opportunity. Amen. Appreciate you being here this morning. Appreciate the opportunity to have to get to the house of the Lord. It is good to see each and one here. It really is. It's a great lesson. We're going to be dismissed in prayer. Brother Wes, if you will, dismiss in prayer this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we want to thank you for this day. We want to thank you for this message. Lord, we do challenge. Put it on our hearts that you use us this week. Focus our hearts and our minds towards you. Lord, each and every one of us are going through different things that we need. But Lord, most of all, in this day, that we praise and glorify you. Lord, bring us back to the next point in time where we praise you in all things. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 John. Yes, sir.